Hi and welcome to our lab on agent-based model coding where we will use computer simulations to grow artificial societies uh, ourselves. We will start uh, by coding up a very simple artificial society starting with one single turtle and that is because we will code in NetLogo. That's our prog programming language. And NetLogo historically comes uh, from a very important uh, educational uh, programming language called Logo. That's the reference uh, to it. Uh, and uh, in Logo, turtles have been very important. Originally, in the 1960s, the turtle was actually a little robotic creature that moved around the floor and you could give it instructions through your uh, computer. And then the turtle kind of like moved inside the computer and, uh, and helped to educate an entire generation uh, of scientists on using computers in order to do science. That was educationally especially led by uh, the great pioneer Seymour Papert from MIT, a pioneer in, in computer science, artificial intelligence, and above all, education. And I think the best I can do, uh, I can just leave you with Professor Papert uh, himself uh, to introduce a very important concept, uh, the concept of recursion. All right, so why don't we go and try some ourselves? Uh, you go just to Nate Logo, you open it up, and you start a new, um, just a new model, um, and it's completely empty. There's nothing on it. There's no information about it, um, and there's also no code. All right, so let's try to start and set up some code. And uh, how do we set that up? Well, we first start with to set up, um, and that's to set up uh, the code. That's how that's how you start. Uh, and then if you do a semicolon afterwards, you can actually describe, you can comment on what it is. So to set up, what I do here is in order to set up a new model, do the following. So that's how I actually start. So that's what the to set up do. So in order to set up, do the following. Now, as a first step, uh, I, say, um, that's, I say clear all. That's a very, that's just a good coding practice because you might have done something before with the program and you just start with saying, well, clear your table, clear your desk, right? Just before you start doing your homework, you just organize your desk. You do the other papers away and you do what you ever did before. Just clear the space. So that's just good coding practice. We start with clear, clear all. Uh, that means that clears all the physical space, but we also want to uh, clear the memory of any time. So we said, say, reset ticks. So the ticks are, you remember, the ticks in, in that logo is actually what, what counts the time. So we re reset the ticks as well. So these are just clean coding practices uh, to start at a, at a clean sheet. And then we want to create something. Okay, so we create turtles. That's just because, well, as you already know now, <laughs> Historically, that's what, what agents are called in, in, in that logo, they are turtles. And uh, we create um, one, one turtle. And then we just, uh, well, let's end it. Let's end our program. If you t type end, it will realize like, okay, that the two in order to set up, that's the end. So that's kind of like a bracket here between them. These are, these are in, in ten, indented here. And um, it goes from two to the end. And that's now, it clears all, it says, resets the uh, ticks to zero, and it creates one turtle. Let's see what they do if you go in the interface. Oh, we don't have any button here to do anything. So let's create a button. Let's go to buttons here, and you can create slider, controls, chooser, plots. We just want a button. Um, we want to create a button, and now I get this cross here, and I create a button. Let's create it right here. And we call this button setup. That's just what we call it, and we press OK, and now we have a setup button. And if we now press the setup button, it creates a triangle, a turtle. I think that's well in that logo. Everything is a turtle. It's not really a turtle. It's just every agent is called a turtle, and we have a little triangle here. All right, uh, but I would really like to have a turtle. I want to go back to the roots. So let's see if we can give our turtle some characteristics. Um, so we have a turtle here. Let's, uh, let's put something else in our program before we get to the end. And we can ask the turtle to do something. Uh, so we ask the turtles to, and uh, now we put in here another bracket. 
Uh, and inside this bracket, you can see it goes, it, 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 it scooches in one more and it has another sub, sub routine here, another sub instruction here. And we say set turtles, uh, set shape, set shape and set the shape to turtle. I want, I want a turtle shape actually here. And uh, you can also set other shapes. Um, so I can make a comment here, check out others uh, you can check them out under tools so if you go here under tools and there's a turtle shapes editor <laughs> interesting right so here are all the different turtle shapes you can have bugs you can have boxes airplanes car cows happy faces uh, persons sheep, trees trucks uh, and turtles here we are it tells us that's that's something we can do okay so we want a turtle like this we really want turtles so that's what we're going for check out others under tools turtle shape editor i think it's called right so what is it called turtle shape editor uh, so you can check out others but we want we want turtles and then we say set size to uh, let's say three and set color to red also well try different colors uh, and see what you get get here and uh, that's how we finish our routine. So I, I close this bracket. You see it recognizes like, okay, these two brackets go together. And here we go to the end of the routine. Let's see what this then does. We go to our interface and we press our setup again. Wow, here we have our turtle, a red turtle. And you can set it up every time. It sets it up in the middle of the screen. And every time it sets it up a little bit differently, it randomly throws a turtle on the table. Well. Well, congratulations, we created our first member of our artificial society. Why don't you go ahead and code this here up? Uh, follow, follow the instructions that I just did. You can open it on the side and uh, you code it up until here. Create a turtle, a red turtle. You can play around with different shapes and colors as well. And, uh, and then we continue. All right, so let's get our turtle moving a little bit. It seems pretty frustrated here being dropped in the middle of the, in the, middle of the screen. So let's add another, another routine here. And uh, that is not to set up, but to go. So I can as well uh, put a comment here. So everything that is behind the semicolon is not considered by NetLogo. That's just for us, for us humans. That's just a comment uh, in order to, to go slash get moving, um, do the following. So this is just documentation that I put here. What do we do? Well, we ask the turtle, uh, we ask the turtles um, to do something. And this is quite literally, I don't even need to comment here anything. You understand what they're doing. Ask turtles to do something. What do we want it to do? Well, let's start a bracket. And let's don't have the turtle going around in, in kind of like a spiral deterministically, because in social sciences, you know, we don't, we don't follow deterministic patterns when we move around or, or, or our behavior in general is not, is not a deterministic algorithm. Uh, we have many reasons. We actually even claim that we have a free will to do whatever we want. So it always varies a little bit, but uh, there's some structure, some, some predictable structure as well. So it's kind of like random. Uh, within some constraints. If we would want to model why a person exactly moves left or right, then you would have to model every neuron which is configured by genetics and every experience the person ever had, which then leads this person to make a right or left turn. And that, well, since we don't model that, what we do is we just take a broad brush and we say, well, I don't know, 60% uh, the person turns right or left. That's just what we observe in this situation. And that's then uh, how we abstract from the details of how a person take, makes a decision. So let's basically then let's flip a coin, right? Let's, let's, uh, uh, let's uh, abstract from that and summarize all these intricate uh, decisions with a coin flip. And then we say, if else, so that's a, that's a command that says, if the coin flip and we have a coin flip here that we have to determine that we have to still to define this function. If the coin flip is something like one or zero, for example, heads or tails, then we make a right turn. Let's make it random up to 60 degrees uh, and as well 
If not, if else, so if it is, let's say heads, let's make a right turn uh, 60 degrees, else make a left turn, um, turn, turn randomly up to, up to 60, 60 degrees. So let me comment that, let me describe what I just did here. If the coin flip is, let's say true, for example, if it's zero, or one for that matter, it doesn't, doesn't really matter because a, a coin is binary. Um, uh, then turn right up to 60 degrees. Otherwise, and else, um, left up to 60 degrees. All right, so, so we do that. Um, and then let's say, let's go forward. Same as we saw in the original code. And there we say we move forward, but we don't move forward deterministically as well. We move forward also randomly. So take uniformly, choose between zero steps and up to three steps. So uh, to move randomly between zero and three steps forward. And, and, and that's what the four is, right? So the four includes in computer science, most often we start counting at zero. So it's zero, one, two, three. So that's four, four steps that we actually count. Um, and then we end this routine. So we turn six, up to 60 degrees, left or right randomly. And then we want to add uh, a tick, a time tick. We also have to tell that the program will add one unit of time um, add one unit of time to our counter and end this routine. And you will see if I press now end, it will go back and it realizes so this bracket here that goes together to go to all of that and then end. Now, we still have to specify this function here, the coin flip function. Uh, because it doesn't, it doesn't know what to do. If we would try to do it here, it says, well, there's something called coin flip. It doesn't even allow us to get out of here. Nothing named coin flip has be, been defined. I just said coin flip and that logo doesn't really know what coin flip is. So I have to specify the function at the end. Often when you write code, you kind of like put all these functions at the end. That's uh, kind of like your footnotes uh, where you then uh, refer to. So you don't want to put all of this code in here. So you want to have it readable and you define your function below. So to report coin flip, what do we do? Uh, so this, this flips a coin and that what it does, it is reports the result of a random flip among two options, head or tail or zero and one uh, in this case. And we just say if it's zero, then it's true, right? Then you would go right otherwise else you would go left it would be a one if otherwise else and then you end and that's actually that's our little footnote here right so we put that at the end and it defines what this function does let's see if it still complains oh no it does not um, so we have set up but oh, we need another button a go button okay so let's create our button we create a new button here and we call that go display name go as well and see if that works Right, we go. The turtle goes, it moves, and it turns. Oh, actually, you see, well, it gets to this end, and it cannot go further. It wanted to come through. This wraps around to this side here, but it couldn't go through, and it goes every time I click. Oh, yeah, it could. It could wrap around, and it goes to the other side. Actually, yes, that's, that's how it's programmed. It can go through, and it comes back on the other side. So this turtle lives on a donut, right? So this uh, end wraps to this end, and this end wraps to this end. Actually, what we're doing here is uh, we go only once, right? I have to click every time. So let me go here and uh, tell it uh, go, and uh, it's actually only go once, right? So the, the, the command is go, but then we go once. If I would click here forever, it would go on forever, but this is only go once, and then we can make two different sliders, two different buttons, no, not sliders, a button. Uh, and the second button we could then call go and this is go forever and then we click this forever here and with that there is the recursion the recursion now happens and if we click now go forever the turtle 
starts to go forever. There it is. I don't do anything. I just, well, it looks pretty alive, right? Well, what did we do? <laughs> it's just, we just uh, made it turn up to 60 degrees uh, randomly, left or right, every time they're flipping a coin and it, it looks like the turtle is looking for something, right? And this is done by this recursion here, the go recursion. So we have the go command and then uh, it goes into this recursion here to go. Uh, it goes here until it, it adds another tick and then it runs forever this loop here basically, this recursion. So it goes to go and then it asks the turtle to flip a coin. What is flip a coin? It does this here. It turns randomly left or right and then it goes forward randomly up to up to three steps or it stays put and then it adds another tick. So, and that's actually what it is, right? So often behavior, also human behavior, we do slight variations of the same thing uh, and this recursive behavior then, well, in the recursion and the algorithm, there's actually our behavior, it unfolds and the slight variations uh, lead to something that actually, yes, like from the outside, yeah, you would say, well, I don't know if this little turtle has, has a will or something, it, it certainly looks like it's, it's doing something. So, well, congratulations. There you have um, your first dynamic uh, computer simulation. Why don't you go ahead, stop this, go to the code, code it up until here, and then um, we continue. All right, so let's uh, scale up from our one single turtle to a society. Right. Okay. Let's go to the code first of all. Instead of having one turtle, let's create um, 75. That sounds good. Is that a society already? Yeah, it's, a, it's a pretty good group. So if we now press set up the 75, wow, we have a big ball of turtles here. <laughs> let's see if we make them all walk. Yes, they all take random coin flips, so they're all slightly different in their in their movement. And we can see. Oh yeah, right. That's an entire turtle zoo that one after the other updates and well randomly walks around here. So let's, we can also, instead of having them start all in this little uh, hairball here, we can set them up on, on, on different x, y coordinates, right? So when we have our turtles here, uh, our 75 turtles, let's say, create 75 turtles. So give some description here so we don't forget later, but it's really like, in, in NetLogo you don't even need the comment line in other programming languages, but this is like create turtle 75. I think, I think it's understandable what that does, <laughs> right? Okay, let's, we said we have our 75, let's spread them around uh, randomly. So we could have another command here and we say set x, y, so that's the x, y coordinates, random x core, so it's a random x coordinate and a random y coordinate and we close that so it, it realizes that's the bracket here uh, can also make that next line we say like, okay we, we, we give here a characteristic and we set random x and y coordinates and what that basically does then is let's just comment here is we spread the turtles on random x and y coordinates. That's what we want to do. So they're all not in the hairball, right? So we set them up and that's, oh yes, now you can see. They're all spread out here. Uh, I'm gonna do that again. And now if we go once, yes, they already start, start spread out all over our coordinate system, our x, y coordinate system. Now let's also give them some behavior, not only moving around, but some behavior, some, something they, they can do. Now I'm in the department of communication, so I'd love to give them some messages. And I give the turtle a trait, so that's a, a, a trait that they get right from the beginning. That's why I put up here, so for example, up here we can make a list of characteristics or traits, uh, attributes that turtles have. And uh, in, in that logo language, that's, uh, it said that was the turtle's own. So the turtle's own, message well question mark does the turtle own a message uh, i don't know so in order to describe that here say true or false does a turtle own a message 
Well, does the turtle have a message? I don't know. We want to have a communication process. So some, let's say some turtles have messages, some uh, uh, turtles don't. And let's say they communicate messages. We start by defining that nobody has a message, right? So let's go here to our characteristics, our 75 turtles. We tell the turtles that set message, question mark, false. That basically what that means, like nobody has a message. We create the 75 and nobody has a message. So, so right now I'm just, what I did with these two lines of code is exactly the same. The end effect is the same. We gave a message, we said they could have messages, but nobody has a message. So we are as, as before, but let's give uh, one of them a message, right? So we go maybe back here. So we create our messages. Okay, we, we say nobody has a message. We throw them randomly on it. We ask the turtles to have a certain shape and then maybe a good place it's often it's a, it's your choice where you want to give it the instruction sometimes it matters the order sometimes it doesn't but here let's put that at the end and then we ask one of turtles to set the message to true so one of them if I, I think that already was like plain English but I can be a little bit more direct even give one of the turtles a message, right? So as you can see, net local code is very intuitive. Ask one of the turtles to have a message. Set the message setting to true instead of most not having. One of them has a message, right? Then let's bring some communication dynamic in it. So you could go here and then, so one has the message, then we ask our turtle to move, and let's also ask her that, let's have a comment here, and I'm gonna explain that real quick. Um, if the turtle meets another turtle at the same patch, then communicate the message. So every time you meet another turtle, you basically then communicate the message. How do we do that? We say if any question mark other turtles here with message. So pretty self-explanatory. Let's let me explain that again a little bit even more direct in, in, in plain English. Uh, if another turtle is at the same patch, uh, then set message true. That means you basically you communicate the message, you meet somebody, tell them what you know. And then if message, if you have a message, uh, let's also let us see that because you want to track it, right? So let's set color to yellow. So um, make all carriers of message yellow. So you can do that. And then we add a tick. Uh, yeah, we still, we still have that here at the bottom. So this is just a, a sub thing that we put in now. So we ask one of the turtles, first of all, to have the message. Then uh, if it is, oh, okay, let's go through the entire code what it does. Um, we give our turtles, uh, we give our turtles uh, the ability to have messages. We create 75 of them, we throw them randomly in our coordinates. Uh, we ask them to be turtles, that's what we do here. And we ask one of the turtles to have a message. Then we ask the turtles to go, when we press go, we, we ask them to move randomly left or right up to three steps. And then if they are on a patch where there is another one of the turtles, uh, it communicates that message and well, but all of the carriers at the end are yellow and we add a tick. This random coin flip, we still need the definition here. So let's see what that does. We do our setup now. Um, and if we go once, we see like, oh yes, after we go once, at the beginning now, but after we go once, because this is in the go command, our message, we put it here in our go command, nobody has it. And if we go once, one turtle has a, one turtle has a message. This one is yellow now. And if we keep on going, we go once and let's see when is the first communication happening. It doesn't meet anybody. Nothing happens here. Um, yes, they're, they're communicated uh, something. So 
So here we have our, our one turtle and if we go once, well, this is the carrier of the message and it doesn't meet anybody yet until it is with somebody at the same location. And when it is with somebody at the same location, here we can see it communicated the message. So it met somebody else, it communicated the message. Now there are two turtles with a message and they both can spread the rumor. Here a third turtle got infected with the rumor or infected with the disease. Uh, you might say we can also have that going automatically, our automatic update, it depends how, how quickly you do that. And at the end, well, everybody, everybody should hear of the rumor at the end, right? Or everybody should adopt the innovation. Now, kind of like half of them have it until the message spread to every single one. Are there still some outsiders here? Yes, but we're gonna get them. One little turtle still doesn't want to hear it. Here we go. Now everybody, everybody got the message. We spread it among in, in our society. Let's do a little empirical science here. Let's uh, let's see how actually how quickly it spreads. And for that, let's monitor it. So we create a button. We create a monitor, uh, and then the little cursor comes up here. I click and I create a monitor, and I tell the monitor to count turtles with color equal to yellow, right? And the display, display the name, we call it um, message turtle counter. Call it whatever, whatever you want, but the, the, the command is here, count turtles with color yellow see how that goes so we have the setup and we have one exactly one turtle now and if we go up now it's two yeah exactly there are two yellow ones and it counts it counts the number of the uh, of yellow turtles three now perfect uh, let's make that a little bit also graphical and for that we can create a plot let's make really an empirical sign let's call this the diffusion curve so that's the diffusion of innovation curve. Um, traditionally in communication that's related to the diffusion of innovation, diffusion of messages. So here we have the X label and the X label we say that's time. We want that on the X label. And the Y label we want to have it the count of the turtles. And we say plot count turtles, but no, we don't want all the turtles. That would be boring, they would just be 75. With color equal to yellow. So you basically count the turtles with, with yellow color and um, that's it. Apply. Uh, apply here. Uh, okay, apply. Okay, and uh, uh, let's select and move it over here. It's a little bit better. Uh, set up and we go. Oh, we can see here now we have a graphical representation of it. And if we do that automatically, we can now see our diffusion curve. Theoretically, it should be an S curve. Uh, not many people are infected. Then we have a phase transition here. Many, many uh, turtles uh, get the message. At the end, there will be a saturation effect because we cannot have more than 75 turtles affected, infected or more than 75 turtles with a message because we only have 75 turtles. So that's the typical S-shaped diffusion curve here. Now we got to 75. Why don't you go ahead and code all of this up um, and play around with it a little bit. Uh, adjust also some settings and well, congratulations. Congratulations on creating uh, your first artificial society, of growing your first artificial society uh, from the bottom up, a turtle society, which is, as you now know, well justified by historical precedents. Congratulations.